response to a request from a viewer, here's a quick video on partial tables. When you make a table to test for validity, you want this, not this. This, not this. In logic, sometimes it's good to be lazy. So learn to use a partial table to test for validity. It saves a ton of time. Place your argument across the top of the table with your conclusion at the right. Then add a single row to keep track of your T's and F's. Remember, if the argument is valid, it will be impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. So if we can somehow make the premises true and the conclusion false, we'll know it's invalid. Only the pattern of true premises and false conclusion provides useful information. All other patterns of T's and F's tell us nothing. Nada, zip, zilch, absolutely nothing. Focus like a laser beam on the only pattern that matters all true premises and a false conclusion. If you can create that pattern, it's invalid. If you can't, it's valid. Always start by making the conclusion false. In this case, that means assigning truth to P. First step done, we now have a false conclusion. To achieve that, we had to assign truth to P. So now assign truth to P anywhere else it shows up in the table. Now we try to make the premises true. Order doesn't matter. So let's start over here where it looks easy. We need the premise to be true. So we assign false to W. All done. We have a true premise. Of course, we assigned false to W, so we need to do the same for any other W in the table. I said it doesn't matter which premise we tackle first, but this one worries me because we've already assigned true to the antecedent, which means if we assign false to the consequent, the conditional will come out false. And that's a problem. Our whole mission here is to force the premises to all be true. So let's back up and assign true to R. Now the premise comes out true. And let's not forget to assign true to any other R's in the table. So far so good. We have forced a false conclusion and several true premises. But our last two premises are tough because we've already committed to a true antecedent here and a false disjunct here. We have to assign true to S to make this conditional true. Okay, no problem there. But since we made S true, we have to enter true for this S over here, too. And that is a problem. Because negation flips the T to F, and now we have a false disjunction. Ah, we were so close to having all true premises and a false conclusion. So let's back up and change the S to false. That way the negation will flip it to T and we'll have a true disjunction. Nice. Well, not so nice. Because to achieve that, we changed S to false. But over here on this conditional, we need S to be true. Now that we've changed S to false, this premise comes out false. Do you see what's happening here? We can't get the pattern of all true premises in a false conclusion. No matter how hard we try, it's impossible. So that means it's a valid argument.